Right, so you're recording now. So um, as I said, Paul invites, and as you do, Lord will bless you. So we're talking about choosing the right spouse, choosing the right spouse. Um, let's go. So because of time, I'm not going to digress. Uh, how many times is love mentioned in the Bible? The answer is there. Love was mentioned in the Bible 712 times. We we part of our essence, the essence of humans. We want somebody to love and we want to love someone. It is part of our essence as human beings. No matter how, how you are, if you're single, um, one day you are believing God to bring you someone that loves you. And of course, you love them, you know. And being single is not a curse. So I just want to put it out there that because you are single does not mean that there's something wrong with you. Um, there are many people that God used that were single. Paul was single. Um, there's a woman, Anna, in the Bible. She prayed for the coming of Jesus. She was married for like seven years and she was widowed for a lot of years. And she spent her time in the temple praying for the coming of Jesus. So the mere fact that Jesus was born and he wasn't killed and the mere fact that he escaped to Egypt at a young age with Joseph and Mary is a testament to the prayers of Anna. So there are many people in the Bible that were not married and fulfilled destiny. Now, if it's your decision to be married, if it's your goal to be married, if it's your heart cry to be married, I decree and declare that God will bring you the right spouse in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. 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 So, so there, there's nothing wrong with it. So I don't want someone to, to make you feel bad. And, you know, I used to be in, like, maybe when I go to a church and they start talking about this in a marriage, I'm like, oh, oh. You know, it's the way your hand does your, because of what you've been through, you just like, get out, you're going away. So I don't want you to have that mindset that, oh, we are, you know, vilifying single people. No. God is saying to you and me that we are perfect in him. And I pray that God will continue to perfect us in Jesus' name. Amen. So marriage, I mean, love was mentioned 712 times, times in the Bible. Marriage is a beautiful thing and a gift from God. If you are, if you choose to be married, if you want to be married, marriage is a beautiful thing. It's a gift from God. Look at Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage should be honored by all. So there's a honor that comes with marriage. You know, I noticed that there's a level of respect that they give to married women. A woman can be 22 and married, and I've not even noticed it before, and they give her even more respect to someone that is maybe single at maybe, maybe 28 or 27. Just give an example. I don't know. There's an honor that comes with marriage. There are some jobs that they may not give someone that is not married. There's a man of God I know. He was a pastor before he got married and he was doing well. But I think because he wasn't married, they did not push him as much. And after a while, they moved him back to maybe back to maybe to the home base. So they, they were just very careful. But when he got married, oh man, he was... <laughs> so there's a way that marriage brings honor. Amen. So Hebrews 13, 4 says, marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure. The marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexual immoral. That's what the Bible says. I'm speaking facts from the Bible. Marriage is beautiful. Marriage comes with a set of responsibilities. Responsibility of being loyal to your spouse. Responsibility of faithfulness. Responsibility of maturity. There are many things that come with marriage. So it's not just on a platter of good. Marriage takes work. We are not talking about marriage, we are talking about choosing a spouse. So I just want to just lay the groundwork about marriage, that marriage is a beautiful thing. Let's say if you have had a bad experience in marriage, or you maybe grew up in a family where there was no good marriage. Maybe your parents did not portray great marriage. I want to let you know that marriage is a beautiful thing. Marriage is not a necessary evil. So we see that, hey, I got to get married so that I don't, you know, commit adultery or fornication. No. Marriage is a beautiful thing. The Bible says two is better than one. One will chase a thousand. Two will put 10,000 to flight. You look at the book of Ecclesiastes. Talk about the fact that, you know, when two people come together, they can even warm themselves. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Marriage is a beautiful thing and is a gift from God. Now, the world wants to vilify marriage. They are changing the concept of marriage. Marriage did not start with the government. Marriage started from God. Look at the book of Genesis 1. Let us look at it quickly so that 
And the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1, let's start from verse 27. 1 verse 27 to 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. Verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the face of the earth. And the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, Genesis 2 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So marriage is beautiful. May God help us in Jesus name. Amen and amen. So let's move on. Let's keep it moving. So God is the one that founded marriage. So when you see man and man, I'm not trying to be old school, woman and woman, gay marriage, transsexual, trans, everything. Bible says man and woman. He said it's not good for man to be alone. Amen. Of course, Genesis 2.18, we mentioned it, 21 to 24, you look at the concept of marriage that God is saying to you and me. That is not good for man to be alone. Now, alone does not mean lonely. Alone means alone in your responsibilities, alone in destiny, alone in, in the work of your hands, alone in your talent. It is not good for you to be alone. When God brings you your own spouse, God has brought that person to amplify your talents, to take you to a higher level, to push you to the, to the height where that God has prepared for you. May God help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Nobody is perfect in himself. That's why in the Bible you see that, that God made Adam to sleep. There was a place where God now took the rib from man and made woman. Woman. Woman is a, <laughs> is a man with a womb. A woman, a womb man is a man with a womb. So when the Bible says if any man is in Christ, it's talking about a woman because a woman is a man with a womb and God created it that way. Amen. Amen and amen. Now I put here that God has given you and me the power of choice. God has given you and me the power of choice. Gone are the days, I believe, where they are doing forced marriages, where they are doing arranged marriages. I know there are some cultures that do it. I have some friends, like I have Indian friends. Let me give an example. Many of them, their parents have arranged marriage. Oh, you are from this caste system. You are from this caste system. You are from this tribe. Let's get married. Oh, I have a son. You have a daughter. Let them get married. So when I talk to some of them, their parents, they get, literally, they arrange their marriage for them. And it's still going on till today. Now, God can arrange marriage. God can do it. He can bring two people together. But God has given you and me the power of choice. You can choose who you want to marry. You can choose what you want to eat. You can choose how you want to dress. He has given you and me the power of choice. And Joshua 24, 15 says, Joshua 24, 15 says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. God does not even, he, he, he doesn't even force you to serve him. He does not force you to serve him. He has given you and me the power of choice. Let's keep it moving. Choosing a spouse can be very tedious and nerve wracking <laughs> does he like me does she like me you know it's a, it can be very annoying let me let's say loud amen i know some people don't want to answer <laughs> it can be very ah oh lord have mercy but it must be done carefully it must be done prayerfully and with the help of the holy spirit choosing a spouse can can you, you don't know how that person is thinking you don't know if the person likes you. There are many things that, that, that goes on in terms of choosing. But God is saying to you and me that in the place of choosing or being chosen, it must be done carefully. It must be done prayerfully and with the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God. He reveals the deep things of God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. He reveals the deep things of God. That's the Holy Spirit. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Somebody has a question. 
Uh, and the question is, um, um, okay, never mind. It's not there. It depends on, yeah. Please just, if you have any questions, send to, send, DM me, DM me the question. If you want me to bring it up to the audience, sure. If you want it to be a private conversation, that's fine. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. All right. I put here, choosing the wrong spouse or getting to the wrong marriage or choosing the wrong marriage partner can delay destiny and can cause tremendous lifelong pain. <laughs> See, apart from your salvation, which is a gift from God, he said, by grace we are saved. He said, it's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. I'm summarizing scripture now. Being a child of God is by grace. There are many people that are not saved. God is saying to you and me, the most important step after your salvation is your marriage. Your destiny is riding on your marital choice. Your fulfillment is riding on your marital choice. Who you choose to marry will determine a lot that will happen in your life. I can boldly tell you that if you marry the wrong person, life will be hard. Oh, life will be difficult. And I'm not, it's not a curse. Because who you choose to spend the rest of your life with will determine so many things about you. And it must not be done haphazardly. It cannot be done with your emotions. You can't be thinking, you know, people watch movies, yeah, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, oh, Romeo, my love. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. That's rubbish. Forgive me. <laughs> you know, oh, Romeo. Romeo and Juliet is Romeo and Juliet in, in, in movie and maybe Shakespeare. In real life or in the real life that we are in, you don't make that kind of decisions with your emotions. Your destiny is riding on your marital choice. Your marital choice cannot be done under pressure. Let us keep it moving. Don't pity anybody to marry them. Oh, this person has been chasing me for two years. <laughs> you can't marry out of pity. May God help us in Jesus' name. Say loud amen. You cannot marry somebody out of pity. No. Oh, this person. And you know, you have to be careful not to lead somebody on. You can't, you have to be careful not to lead an individual that you don't want to marry. You have to be careful not to, to do things that will make them think that you are interested in them when you are not interested in them. It has caused a lot of pain. I've heard stories where, like, maybe um, in a setting, a boy and a girl are good friends. They are doing well. They hang out a lot. They're like besties. And one of the, all of a sudden, the guy does say, hey, hey, girl, I'm getting married. And the guy's like, are you crazy? Are you? <laughs> what? You're getting married? And he's like, yeah. Like, I'm going to introduce you to my girl like next week, Sunday at church. She's coming to church on Sunday. And you're like, are you, what? Don't assume in marriage. Don't, please. Because you are hanging out with somebody that does not mean that the person like you. <laughs> May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. No, but four, three, whatever it is, don't marry under pressure. I am turning 30. I should be married by now. Hmm. Uh, let me give an example. I, I, personally for me, you know, I came to a certain age, I'm like, ah, Ross, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm in, I, I need to be married. The Lord saved me. I would have entered into a life, I'm telling you the truth, I'm just being honest with you. I would have entered, in, entered into a lifelong problem because I was making a decision based on pressure. I am Tony, maybe I'm turning 28. I'm not married. What's going on? Ladies and gentlemen, it's best to be single at 28. See, let me tell you the truth. It is best to be single and, not, and, 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 be, and be okay than be married to the wrong person. It is best to be, to be lonely at 30 than to be married to the wrong person at 24. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And let me tell you, the, the, the choice of marriage, only God, because you don't know the future. Paul said, he said, we know no man after the flesh. I don't know you. You think I know you. I don't know you. You don't know me. You don't. You think you know me, but you don't know me. But the Holy Spirit knows who people are. May God help us in Jesus' name. There are some people, you meet somebody in church. This guy is very vibrant, but that guy is crazy. But you think that because this guy is very active, he's in active in four departments, you know no man after the flesh. You know no woman after the flesh. Only God can reveal somebody to you. So to 
entering into the wrong marriage can cause delay in destiny. Let me give you an example. One of my parents' friends or my mom's close friends, she's late now. She's late. She was dating somebody and the child is a, this person that she was dating was a child of a pastor. Where I come from, they call them a more pastor. <laughs> a pastor's kid. A, a, a. <laughs> so you will imagine that if this person is a pastor's child, this person is supposed to be like a good person. That's why you get it wrong. <laughs> because somebody is a pastor's child does not mean that that person is the right person. So she did this person. So when they were very close to getting married, somehow, I think God revealed to maybe a, a, a friend that this guy is the wrong person for you. She's like, are you kidding me? You're about to get married. She's like, hey, I'm telling you the truth. This guy is the wrong. And she's like, hey, this guy is the child of a pastor. This, you know, she gave different examples. But this guy's like, hey, man, I'm telling you, I, don't, I just feel like this person is not the right person for you. And guess what happened? They got married. The first thing was abuse. I mean, the way the man beat her. One time she was pregnant. He beat the hell out of, oh my God. It takes an animal to beat a woman. And it takes a crazy, you know, I don't want to curse. I'm, I'm, <laughs> a crazy animal <laughs> to beat a woman that is pregnant. That is, oh my, he, she had to leave the marriage. Unless, I mean, if she did not leave, the man who was busy, I mean, oh God, it was so bad. This is a woman that, if she cook for you, oh God, oh Lord, our food is one of, see today, when I, sometimes when I talk to our children, I'll say, man, your mom's beans. Ah, your mom's boy, boy. I don't know some things. That woman was a woman of God. <laughs> but she married the wrong woman. Wrong man, excuse me. Now you would think that because that guy was a, pastor's child that that guy no so you need the help of god not to marry the wrong person marrying the wrong person can delay destiny i'll give another example a popular man of god in texas is a man that talks about wisdom i forgot his name again please if you remember, remember his name let me know he talks about wisdom a lot he's a enter about wisdom that's him he has a relation with wisdom please type his name or just let me know his name he's in texas i think he's in fort worth texas mike Murdoch. thank you he married the wrong person. And that, uh, see, today he's not married. He married, either he married the wrong person or I don't even know what happened to him. Till today. So God will help us in you. And now, if you have made mistake in marriage, maybe you married the wrong person, God can redeem you. Say loud amen. If you have married the wrong person, you are divorced, there is hope for you that has been cut down to rise again. Look at Ruth. Her husband died early, but God gave her compensation in our husband, Boaz. So God can restore the years that you have lost. So don't feel bad. I, I married this person. I'm divorced. I'm separated. No. God can restore the years that you have lost. And may God restore to you the years that you have lost in Jesus' name. Amen. I am trying to say that your destiny is riding on your marital choice. Your destiny is... You, you get my point. Okay. Let's keep it moving. Before you choose or make the choice of mind of getting married, or first of all, move on from past hurts and pain. Move on from past hurts and pain. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. By God's grace, move on. Now, me saying move on, I don't understand what you are going through, but God understands what you are going through. So there's a place to move on. Move on. Somebody cheated on you. Let, you know, the worst thing I can ever put somebody is like, some, maybe you, you love somebody with your heart and the person cheated on you. Emotionally, physically, it hurts. But God is saying to me and you, it's time to move on. Let me give you an example. <laughs> Before I, there was one girl I was talking to. And I like, oh, man. I, I mean, I was in love. I, oh God. When I'm in love, I spend money. <laughs> I spent money, time, effort. It didn't work out. And I was really, really sad. I remember I was in Lagos. I went for, I was in, I took a vacation to Lagos. So where we, I was, the house was on the beach, like literally Lekki, you know, some Lekki phase one. The house was on the beach. So, so I took a walk on a Sunday. I, 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 I didn't go to church that day. <laughs> I was so sad. So I was walking, I was on the beach for almost four hours. I was just walking back and forth in the hot sun of Lagos. 
back and forth on the beach, back and forth, just looking. I said, God, what will I do? <laughs> but you will hear God in Jesus' name. Say a loud amen. You will hear God in Jesus' name. Say a loud amen. You will hear God. God speaks. God told me, say, Shun, it's okay. Move on. Now, God speaking to me. It's not as if I healed completely there, no. It took my parents to come into order. So I think after I went, my dad, I went to his office at church and he looked at me and said, I, I think my mom was there too. From now on, I break you off from it. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> and that was it. Many of us still have emotional attachments to our ex. Some people still have soul ties to their ex-boyfriend, their ex-girlfriend. And you, how will you, do you want to bring somebody else into your marriage or into a relationship when you have not moved on from it? No. If there's an emotional attachment, there's still a soul tie to your past, it's time to divorce from that. Heal from detrimental decisions that you made. You made the wrong decision. You slept with that guy and you knew that guy was a bad boy and you slept with him and you feel bad. Forgive yourself. Maybe, God forbid, you were raped or somebody, your enemies was raped. Let's give an example. And that thing is very hurtful. And you, it's time to forgive. God has forgiven you. Forgive yourself. That's one thing I will tell you to do before you get married. Forgive, heal from hurt. Heal from pain. You know, maybe one of your ex, your ex-boyfriend was crazy. He was, was mad. Let's put it that way. He was stupid. He did things. In, I've heard stories where like maybe they were... <laughs> you know, there are some stories you hear like some people, they have mind though. Let me not go into examples because of time. I want us to, to end quickly. We have 20 more minutes or less than that. Heal from detrimental decisions that you made in the past. God has forgiven you. Forgive yourself. Heal from abuse, from infidelity. Allow your heart to heal. Some people jump from one relationship to another. You just broke off two weeks ago. I heard that it takes about a year for somebody to heal. I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that it takes... Take time to heal. And God will help you in Jesus' name. For those going through emotional pain, emotional hurts, you know, abuse, infidelity, you know, you are going through something that really hurts. I declare and declare that God will send his healing balm and heal you in Jesus' name. The Lord sent his word that, to heal you. So I declare and declare healing. All those pains, you know, some of us is even from our parents. Maybe your parents hurt you, your dad or your mom. Your uncle, that house boy, that house girl, that helper, that person that you trusted, I declare and declare wholeness and healing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Second thing I put there before you get married or before you go into grow up, grow up, Luke 2 52. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature, in favor with God and man. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature. In favor with God and man. Grow in faith. Grow in your maturity. Many of us are in a last relationship. You are not, maybe you are not mature. You fight a lot. You, I mean. <laughs> Grow in maturity. Be a man, as they say. I mean, I'm not saying it in a negative way. And be a woman too. <laughs> Grow in wisdom. Be wise. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Pray, fast, spend time with God. Let God, you know, when you spend time with God, the nature of God rubs up on you. When you spend time with God, the nature of God rubs off on you. Let me tell you one thing, and I noted it here. God has a miracle for you, but this version of yourself may not be able to handle it. God has a blessing for you. God has the right spouse for you. But sometimes this version of yourself cannot handle it. If you are prone to anger and the right person comes, the person may run away based on the fact that you get angry easily. So God has a miracle for you, but this version of yourself may not handle it. I want to give examples, but let's keep it moving. Okay, let me give an example, a re regular example. You have a nice car and you have a 16-year-old that sees very mature. He can, his room is very dirty. Eh? <laughs> I mean, very unclean, unkept, not mature. Will you give the key of your car to that person? You will not. You love your child too much to do that. You will give 
your car to a matured child. You give inheritance to my. You know, there's a scripture that says that a son will not know that he's a son. He will, he will feel like he's a servant because the son has not come into maturity. You get my point? So God has blessings for you. God has the right spouse for you. You must be mature to be able to handle that spouse. Many of us, we you cannot change. You see, if somebody tells you, okay, let me give you an example now. Let's say with you, you are strong-headed. Ah, if you say A is A, A cannot be B. It has to be A. It, it, <laughs> uh, it has to be A, A, A. No. In marriage, you have to be flexible. It is not my way or the highway. I'm telling you, no matter how strong-headed you are, you have to be flexible in marriage. So sometimes God will make it sure that you have to break from a strong position where you are unbending, like stockfish. You cannot bend. <laughs> so there's a place for everybody to grow up, grow up in maturity. You are prone to, if, when you date somebody, you must have sex with them. God is saying, grow up. Start practicing um, celibacy. Start keeping your body under subjection. I'll leave it as that. Amen and amen and amen. So I'm, I'm, I, there's a question here, and, and the question is, if you have a boyfriend, and maybe you, you've broken off maybe a couple of years ago, like maybe a couple of years ago, and, and maybe the God and they preached the gospel to that person, and he's now like a good person, and, um, you know... <laughs> okay, let me read the question to you. Let me read it so that I'm not um, confusing you. Okay, I have an ex, and... Um, you know, an ex-boyfriend that still wants to um, come to me after breaking up after seven years. Seven years ago. So they broke up seven years ago. I preached the gospel to him and he said too much of everything is not good. When I told him I want to break my fast, he said, don't kill yourself. I want to block him because his heart is hardened towards God. But someone told me that you don't look down on people because of their spiritual background because they may be a pastor tomorrow. What are your thoughts? <laughs> What are your thoughts quickly because of time? So the person has an ex, but that ex is not spiritually serious like her. You See, my own answer is don't judge somebody. Of course, you don't judge people. But at the same time, if you're not going the same direction, keep it moving. If you are broken off seven years ago, there's a reason why you guys broke up. You know, sometimes we try to go back to our ex. And there's a reason why <laughs> he did not work out in the first place. Sister Maiwa, 30 seconds, please. Sister Maiwa. Oh my God, this question was probably me um, mm. when I was single because um, people always said I was very spiritual or over spiritual, mm. if you want to call it like spiritual. Mm. Um, mm. And honestly, a lot of the guys that would come my way were guys that I would say were not as, um, I don't want to say as, as spiritual. Maybe they didn't love mm -hmm. God on the level that I did. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I got that a lot, especially when I was in my um, early 30s. People mm -hmm. would just be like, marry somebody. Like, he will grow. Mm -hmm. I got so many. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lady that told me, look at the woman in the Old Testament. God asked the man to marry a prostitute. I mean, I've heard so many things. And it made me so scared. And it made me think that God would just give me a baby Christian for a husband. Now that I've come to the other side of it, I can tell you that this is my biggest advice. And if I could go back and tell myself, I would have not, um, I would have not been tormented. Um, especially when I said no to some guys and people made me feel like I was walking out on the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. The thing I would say to this person is um, <laughs> you don't marry off of potential. Mm -hmm. Potential also does not get realized mm. yes i know there's potential i mean somebody gave me a testimony of mommy and daddy geo that they were um not christians when they got married the mm -hmm. bible says the days of ignorance god has pardoned mm -hmm. we have we're in a different dispensation from when mommy and daddy geo met in the 20s or in the 30s i'm so sorry i don't know which which time they met um but i'm just saying that now there's just so much resources that are available to us in, in, in singleness and christianity please don't marry somebody based off potential Yes. Sorry, that's Amen. it. Amen. Thank you, man. Sorry, I have to, because of time, I don't want to. It says, Aluadu Sin, over to you. Uh, sorry, just to add to what Stamaya said, I heard um, um, Pastor Funke Felix say that 
we should always marry from our tribe. And she's not mm. talking, I am, you are Yoruba or you are mm -hmm. Indian. No, she's saying that even in the house of God, mm -hmm. marry somebody from your tribe. And she's not talking about, oh, you are redeemed, you are Jehovah of this. No. Mm -hmm. If you are spirit coco, please just marry a spirit coco. If you are, you know, if you maybe you only go to church on Sunday. I'm, I'm not saying that's right, but you know, you can also marry somebody that is on your level spiritually. True, true. Thank you very much. Very All they have said is true. Many people have made the mistake of marrying potential. And potential don't get actualized. So they not start getting... I've heard stories. Ah, I've, I've heard one day who said that I was jobless and she married me. Now I'm... Good for you. <laughs> but you don't hear stories. The man was jobless and he's still job... I know... I know... Oh God. And he's still jobless. Do you? Please, the Lord is our strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Ask the Holy Spirit. Marry on your level. Because you can, if you are spirit coco and you marry someone that is not spirit coco, they will think you are doing too much. They will because they feel like, what's your problem, man? Like, dang. Marry someone that is also spirit coco like you. Let's keep it moving because of time. All right. Read books on marriage before you get married. Re when I... Man, I read a couple of books. Read books on marriage, man. Read books on marriage. Read, read at least four to five books. Many people go into marriage not understanding what marriage is about. Okay, your wife is talking and talking. And you're like, why is this woman talking? You don't understand how women think. Even <laughs> read books on marriage. Your husband is quite... See, many people, there's, you know, there's a failure that happens when you don't have knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Please, before you marry, read books, watch videos and clips of reputable and successful marriage counselors. People that have been married for years, not people that have married, that have a successful track record. Marry. Uh, watch them. Okay, Kenneth Copeland. He was divorced before. But now he has been married for about almost 60 years or so, 60 plus years. He can talk about marriage because he has an understanding of marriage. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And of course, I put here, ask God to send you Naomi. I had that for my sister. Ask God to send you your destiny helper. See, in the area of marriage, sometimes you need a connector. You know, I was thinking about Ruth and Boaz, you know, today. I realized that Boaz was a very shy person. He was. So sometimes, as a woman, please forgive me, you can position yourself. <laughs> please hear the word I say. Position. Position yourself where the man can make moves. Pos Please, I said position, not propose. Position yourself. God needs to give you a destiny helper. Ruth did not know what to do. Naomi said, go and meet him at the threshing floor. Wait until he finished eating. Read the book of Ruth chapter 2 and 3. When he has finished eating, let him see you. Now, back in the day, if you do that with a man, they will hang you. You are not supposed to go to an unmarried man as a woman. At that late at night, Mo Mosaic law was there to ban it. But Naomi gave her the right ingredient. Sometimes you need a connector. The, see, in marriage, you can meet your, your husband at the mall. You can meet him in church. You can meet him at the birthday party. You can meet him at, at, a, at, at the funeral. You can meet him anywhere. God needs to bring someone that can connect you to your spouse. I'm telling you, it is highly important. You need destiny helpers. Okay, let's keep it moving. Ask God, because we need this, to destroy every demonic covenant working against your marital settlement. You need to pray that prayer. It came a point in my life where I prayed that prayer because I felt like, ah, what's going on? Something is going on somewhere. No. So I started praying. I said, God, anything stopping me from getting married and marrying successfully, I destroy it in Jesus' name. Now, look at the pattern. You know, I always say it. Look at the pattern in your father's side. Look at the pattern on your mother's side of the family. What have you seen in their marriages? Do they have good marriages? Are there lots of divorces? These are things that should pattern your prayer point. I know many people say it did not happen to me. Yes, it did not happen. But things that are spiritual also need prayers. You have to push it in prayer. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Ask God to destroy every demonic covenant working against your mind. You are beautiful. You are handsome. You are settled. You have a job. You have your own place. And you're like, God, what is going on? You can marry if you want to marry, but you are waiting. You are 
you are believing God for his own best choice. So say, God, destroy every demonic covenant working against my marital settlement. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, today, and forever. God has done it. You have to take it. It is done. By faith, we obtain the promises of God over our lives. So if you are not settled maritally, or you are believing God to be settled, say, my Father and my God, I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, anything stopping you from being settled maritally is destroyed in Jesus' name. Now let's, start, let's pray that prayer quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's pray it. Over everyone here that wishes to be married, every demonic pattern flowing down on their father's side, their mother's side, things that are negative, that is stopping them from being married, I declare and declare the blood of Jesus will wash it away in Jesus' name. Those that have been divorced, those that have been, that, you know, that are believing you, Father, for triumphant marriage, it is done for them. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. I decree and declare by the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost, you will come here and testify of your marriage. You will invite me to come and eat pandejama and rice. <laughs> by the power of the Holy Ghost, before this quarter ends, you will meet your spouse in Jesus' name. You will jam your spouse. Your spouse will jam you. God will orchestrate it where you guys will meet in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Develop emotional, physical, and mental capacity. Please, if somebody is discussing with you, have mental fortitude to carry a discussion. You know, there are many people that... You know, they, you know <laughs> I went on a date with a girl. And I was just talking. You know, just normal talk. Please, you must have that. <laughs> See, before you choose... I mean, if, if, we are talking, if we are talking politics, I know politics is a very hot discussion, be able to carry a conversation. If you are talking about the economy, talking about develop your emotional, physical capacity. Let's say you're, 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 the girl you are talking to is a pharmacist. Do some research on pharmacy. Look at some medicines, combination. Just have something you can discuss. You know, some people don't have mental capacity to handle any form of conversation. You are talking to them, you are talking to a wall. No! <laughs> so develop your emotion. Some people cannot read people's, you can't read people's faces. You cannot read the room. Develop your emotional intelligence. You can be a bricklayer and marry a CEO. Your mentality has to be there. Romans 12, 2. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has to be renewed. Your mind, yes, social cues, man. Just, 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 you know. <laughs> you know, many people that's what has turned up them from their spouse. Just carry on the normal discussion. You know, by the way, we're just looking at um, you know, the Bible, you know. Let's just because of time, I have to keep going. Because of time. <laughs> oh, but I want to say but upon Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And the house of put your name there. Of Jacob shall possess their possession. The house of Jacob, the house of Noah do sin, the house of Jennifer shall possess their possession. You must have emotional intelligence. Some people, you are chasing the same person that has rejected you 10 times. Move on. Sorry, I'm, you know me, I'm just direct. Move on, man. I, I mean, how can you be talking to somebody for the past four years and the person telling you no? They give you cues that they don't like you. Love yourself and move on. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I know I'm blunt. Forgive me. I wish I have the, the gift of being coded. You know, I mean, the person has given you a cue. I don't have time. I don't have time. In this life, you don't have time. You can eat. You can drink. You can. You say you don't have time. Just thank you, Jesus. I am sorry if I am being direct. Ah. And your your destiny helper is waiting there. The person like you. You don't like the person. And the person you like does not like you. Ah, it is well. So please develop emotional, physical, and mental capacity. What if you've seen them in a dream? Ah, or more dream that dream. Oh, see, let me tell you the truth. Let, <laughs> let me give you an example. There's one girl before I've met. See, I've gone to the road. <laughs> so when I got my first real job, my first real, real job, and money was coming in, I said, Ah, Father, thank you. Now I can marry. <laughs> so I saw this girl. I say, Yaka para da da da, rakashan da 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 da. I prayed. God said, Go ahead. I went ahead. I, I told the girl, the girl said, Okay, cool. I met her physically in person. I propose three days fast. I look like a stick. Oh, if you have seen me that I was not looking, I look very emaciated. 
I didn't want my I didn't have jacket. I want my father's jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so that is why I say my you know I say the Lord is saying that you know that um you know I should get married. The girl look at me like say are you the way the girl told me of her more. <laughs> they were selling food somewhere of course in the US I went to go and buy I broke the fasting I mean what's the use of fasting <laughs> the, the girl has said no fasting has ended I went to go and eat I know what happened that it was a church event because we were in a church program and I went back to the service very sad because the girl gave me and it was even like not even like nice that okay you know I'm sorry like bam don't, don't even propose to me again I said oh god have mercy Kai so the person started talking about faith. <laughs> Is that message that uplifted me? I was very sad. <laughs> My mom even asked me because immediately the girl gave me the Ella, you know, the <laughs> I bumped into my parents. <laughs> and my mom was like, ah, you're looking very cool, calm for someone that just got rejected. <laughs> I don't you want me to start crying. So please, um, uh, just move on. Don't be uh, you are, I like this person, and the person is just treating you like a like a like please move on. Okay, keep it moving. Ah, try time, time. I have one more minute. Tips for choosing the right spouse. Looks aren't everything. When God told Samuel, he said man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Don't, everybody based on look, look, this person is, ah, no. You know, as men, I want to be raw, but you know, we have different people. You know, when you look at a woman, she has to be, ah, she has to be loaded. She, ah, hey, hey. Looks aren't everything. I'm not saying that you should not marry an ugly person. No. Or you should marry someone that you are not attracted to. No. Looks aren't everything. Looks aren't everything. I want to give another example, but because of time, I can't give the example. Ah, oh, let's keep moving. Looks, hey, this guy is tall. This guy, this girl has big, you know what you're talking about. She, ah, my guy, hey, 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 look at something. Please, I'm not saying that God cannot. God gives you the desires of your heart. Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. So when God, you know what? I think we should do part two. <laughs> but we have another topic for next week. I can looks and everything. Number two, discover your purpose. In your purpose, you can make a choice. In your purpose, you can make a choice for marriage. In your purpose. See, when I was, you know, I was trusting, believing God for a, a, a spouse, I talked to one girl, and the girl said, I don't want to marry a pastor. I knew in my heart that maybe one day, one day God will come Of So, I mean, knowing my purpose, she's not for me, because my purpose and her purpose don't align. Know your purpose. You remember to level. Ask God for guidance and leading. Ask God for guidance and leading. And more tips, I'm just going to move it now study their character. Character is important. Character is important. And speak. See, let's say you like, okay, you like Jack. You love Jack and you want, you want to marry. Start speaking in tongues about Jack. Father, in the name of Jesus, Jack. Don't speak in tongues. 30 minutes, one hour. Don't speak. God will reveal the character of that person to you. I promise you. Look for the fruit of the spirit. That's what you should be looking for. Someone that is kind. Someone that has self-control. Okay, you are pregnant now in marriage. Do you want the husband that is sleeping around? <laughs> or your husband travel and you know that this man is just mad. No, you want someone that is that is that has self-control. That even in your absence, when you are not there, they still can practice self-control. Someone that is joyful, someone that can bring peace. Look for the fruit of the spirit. Have standards, set boundaries. Don't be led by your emotion. Set bound, please have boundaries. You are dating somebody. We are not going to have sex before marriage. If you cannot do it, then go. Have boundaries. Set boundaries. Okay, it's already 12 a.m. Okay, bye-bye. I'll talk to you later. You are talking at 2 a.m. What do you think will happen? Please. You are hanging out with somebody. You close the door. You are sitting on the bed. Blue light on. You know, some people have different shades of light. Because you are watching a movie. I mean, come on now. Kai, come on, come on. Have standards. Set boundaries. Don't be led by your emotions. Have, you know, have someone that can call you back to order. Don't make excuses for red flags. Be guided. Okay. Like we said, okay, this person does not have money. And you are believing that the person will have money. Please wait for the person to have some money before you marry them. I'm being honest. Okay, you are, you are talking to a, let's say you are talking to a guy in Nigeria now. Or you are talking to a guy in Togo. I don't, <laughs> the guy does not have money. See some money. Eh? Just see some money. 
before you marry them. What if my 2 a.m. is at 8 a.m.? Ah, that's good. If your 2 a.m. is at 8 a.m., sure. I don't, if there's a time difference, sure. But if you're at the same, same time zone, please go and sleep. Go and sleep, please. Keep it moving the next day. Please don't make excuses for red flag. Someone's always angry. And you are making excuses for the anger. Please be careful. Don't make excuses for red flag. It, happened, it has happened to me before. You like somebody, they're your type. You start making excuses for them. And they'll be saved. And they'll be born again. And they won't be angry again. And this one, she won't be... Ah, Ah, uh, I wish we had time. Time has gone. Ah, uh, <laughs> there are many examples we can give now, but don't make it. I've talked to someone that was very selfish. God. Well, let's keep it moving. Don't make excuses for red flags. Don't make excuses for red flags. Please don't. Don't. I think that's it. Look for patterns. Look for financial patterns. Look for family patterns. Nobody has a perfect family. But if you come, you, you see a family where <laughs> open your eyes. Some people just marry anyhow. No, look for patterns. What's going on here? Now it may not be the person's fault. It might be a call to prayer. Okay, you look at this family. They're always divorcing the family. They're always divorcing. So you don't say I will marry this person. Ah, uh -uh, it's a it's a spiritual stronghold that needs to be broken. Start praying. Say, Father, anything that causes divorce in this family will not affect me. Or if in the family, they just Poverty, they're not, please forgive. I'm not mean, please forgive me. But in poverty is spiritual. Look for family patterns. You just marry somebody, marry their pattern, carry it. No, use it as a prayer point. Father, this person, anything affecting their family, and my own family too, will not affect me and my spouse and my children in Jesus' name. Look for behavioral patterns. They lie. Oh, where are you? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm at home. And then another person's house. Look for behavioral patterns. You know, you mind something like lying. Man, see, lying is a pet peeve for me. White lie, blue lie, black lie. Oh, God. Look for behavioral patterns. Do they keep their word? Oh, I will pay you money. See, today they've not paid you anything. If somebody cannot keep their word, be careful about them. I'll leave it as that. Thank you, Jesus. Let us thank God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you. We worship you. We exalt your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Let us thank him in the next five seconds. And pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I will not miss it in marriage. Say it. I will not miss it in marriage in Jesus' name. Father, by the grace of God, I will marry well. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you have not given your life to Jesus, if you want to rededicate your life to him, don't say, Father, have mercy on me. Father, wash me in your precious blood. Take my life and do something with it. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to apologize for going five minutes over time. Please forgive me. We have another topic next week. It's going to be hot. Oh yeah, over to you, Sister Timmy. Thank you very much, guys. All Thank right. You. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're not going to take too much of your time. We're going to keep this moving very quickly.